are God's children. We are His people. We are His light in the world. We have been chosen. Welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. This week's show is brought to you by the RIC Church, anonymous donors, and supporters and viewers like you. Our musical director is Christian Caulfield. And now, to introduce this week's special guest, it's your host, Father Richard Hill. Welcome. Welcome to the Joy of the Lord Show. Thank you for having us into your hearts and into your homes. Come with us on this 30-minute journey to enjoy the joy of the Lord. The table with me here today, I've got Christian Caulfield, our music director, and hopefully the young man who one day will take over my place here and let me go do something else. But anyway, we're going to discuss a little bit more about the joy of the Lord. It's Christmas season. We're coming up on a very special show next week. Next week, for all of you who are used to singing around a Christmas tree and, and <clears throat> maybe... Um, don't get to do that so much anymore or don't have Christmas car carolers come to your door and some of the cities it's not a safe thing to do. Uh, we're going to have a show next week in which we could take people, a few professionals and a whole lot of people like me that are not professional and we're going to sing and play music and sing some Christmas carols so it might sound a little bit like your family or it might sound a little bit like my family did back when I was younger and uh, anyway, I can promise you this, it just won't be totally professional, so come on next week at 6 o'clock with us and sing a few Christmas carols uh, right at home. Christian, how are you doing today? Doing great today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You bet. Looks like you got a Christmas tree behind you there. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's awesome. I think they Wonderful outdid time. themselves on the set uh, this time, haven't they? Oh, yeah. Must they and all the crew have been working hard to try to make everything look really Christmassy. You bet. Yeah, they asked me if I wanted the Christmas tree last week, and I said, well, of course I want the Christmas tree. <laughs> Who wouldn't want the Christmas tree on their set? You bet. Anyway, uh, let me take care of Miss Lammy Pie. I'm holding a mic today, which I don't normally do. But I'm having to because I have some problems in my throat and lungs and all that stuff. And I thought it'd just be a whole lot more polite if I had a handheld mic so I could hold it away if I was going to call or have a problem. Uh, that way I share that part of my life a little bit less with you all. And maybe <laughs> we can share more of the joy of the Lord that way. Here is Lammy Pie, that movie star Lammy Pie. And as you can see, she still has her makeup. She still has her false eyelashes, and thank goodness, thanks to the investigator, she has her skunk stole back. The investigator found who took it, wouldn't tell us who took it, but he said, uh, rest assured, they'll remember they're in the swamp to drain it. I guess that means that he took care of them. I don't know. But the skunk stole came back to home with Miss Lammy Pie. Well, the kids today didn't have a chance to get the question all printed up like they normally do. And I didn't know that till just a few minutes ago. So I told them that's not a problem. We're certainly not going to cheat Miss Lammy Pie out of her time because we don't have the placards to hold up that ask the question and the answer. The question that they asked me was what is easy to get into and hard to get out of? So they asked me this last week um, after we left the air, and I went around asking people. The adults kept telling me debt. Debt's easy to get into but hard to get out of. One person told me a beehive. Beehive was easy to get into but hard to get out of. I thought that was kind of cute. But the kids told me no. For them, what's easy to get into and hard to get out of is trouble. <laughs> and you look at that <clears throat> Lammy Pie's face, you'd just be hard to believe she could ever get in trouble. Or the little children that, that have Lammy Pie as theirs, I'm sure they never get in any serious trouble. So anyway, <laughs> thank you, Lammy Pie. What's easy to get into but hard to get out of is trouble. How about you? You ever been in any trouble? Oh, yeah, plenty of trouble. <laughs> really? You ever made any trouble? <laughs> made trouble. I remember throwing rocks at cars over the back fence when I was a kid. And oh, my there word. There was a police officer that came around and said, what are you doing, son? That was you that was throwing rocks at my car? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and rotten tomatoes and all kinds of stuff. We, my word, we you gotten, were a mean little kid, weren't <laughs> we you? We got into my dad's garden, but anyway, it's neither here nor there. Oh, well, your dad, uh, his garden just had less and less rocks in it as time went on. You huh? bet, you bet. He didn't wonder about that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to your brother about that. Hopefully we'll be seeing him sometime soon. You bet. Sounds good. Well, tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about the nature of trouble and how it relates to joy. Um, they're kind of opposites, aren't they? They sure, sure are. Um, trouble. Trouble can bring uh, more trouble, and <laughs> you got to watch out who you hang out with because they may bring more trouble, and it attracts the trouble. Um, trouble versus um, joy, right? So we're talking right, about. right. Um, and joy um, comes from the Lord, obviously. It's something we receive. Um, tr trouble is not something I don't think we receive. <laughs> you mean you come up with it totally on your own? You bet, you bet. And that has to do with following yourself rather than the Lord. So. Well, I think, I think that you touched on something there that might be worth looking into. Uh, joy comes from the presence of the Lord, and the presence of the Lord comes from just bringing your attention to Him in faith, and knowing who He is, knowing His nature, or having faith in His nature. Trouble normally comes when we cease doing that and we get our eyes on our problems and we start figuring out how to fix them. That's when our repair breaks. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden we don't need a patch, we need a new inner tube. Or, you know, that's when we really have big problems is when our big idea on how to fix something not only doesn't fix it, but makes it worse. So I think that's what I was trying to get to. A lot of times when we're in trouble, we can trace it back to a point where we ceased to follow the Lord and started looking at, focusing on our problem and figuring out how to fix it. And see, that, that's amazing to me because every once in a while I'll be trying to fix a problem and I'll remember how big God is. He spoke and the universe came into being, so what help does he need from me to fix these problems? It, uh, I, I would say probably not a whole lot of my understanding is going to straighten God out and, <laughs> and correct if someplace that he was saying, oh, I was waiting to get that right. I'm so glad you came along and showed me. <laughs> so the word for today is God never violates his principles to accomplish his goals because he doesn't need to. He doesn't have to. If God can speak in the whole universe come into being, why would he need to violate his principles to accomplish his goals. He doesn't need to, and so he doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. <clears throat> so anyway, can you give us some examples maybe of, uh, in general, how people following their own leadership can end up in more trouble, uh, especially when they're trying to fix something, trying to repair something, mm -hmm. and it only makes things worse? You bet. Um, well, you could think about fixing a flat tire. Um, you could. Um, be on the side of a hill and you could be trying to fix the flat tire. Um, it could be trucks and cars going by. You're on the highway on the edge and um, basically... You, know, you, you never wrote any children's books, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of guessed that. Well, let, let's bring this back a little okay. bit into something maybe our viewers can really relate to yeah. that maybe they've tried and they can say, oh yeah, that didn't help out. Okay. And behind you is a beautiful Christmas tree. How many of us have had strained relationships with our loved ones and then at some point overspent to try to buy a nice gift to make that relationship better? <clears throat> Gone into Christmas and thought it was the credit card season rather than the season of Jesus. And so we overspent to try to fix a problem and all it did was compound it because uh, credit card bills do come in then. So that would be an example. Uh, have you ever known anybody or yourself to overspend to try to make something better and it didn't make it better? Oh yeah, most definitely. Most yeah, definitely. In, in relationships, In relationships, right? that's, yeah, that's where it's, where it's at. So what does make relationships better? Um, I think sincerity and uh, honesty and um, the willingness to be humble towards one another and build, try to build a relationship on mutual respect. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of our viewers who haven't finished buying all their gifts and, and so on, and I thought I would encourage them to think about the people that they want to buy a gift for and try to make the gift something special for that person. Mm -hmm. I oftentimes try to find out something about people and, 
and <clears throat> I keep my eye out through the year. I don't do it just at Christmas, but, you know, like I often tell you, I love the appearance of generosity. generosity. <laughs> <laughs> so when I can get something really inexpensive that's going to really work for somebody, that's, that's what I like to do and keep my eye out all year. That's awesome. <clears throat> but anyway, so thinking about a person is really giving some of yourself to them. You're giving them your attention and your time, and that's why, especially women, they like what they call a thoughtful gift, more than oftentimes they like an expensive gift. Unless you're Madonna, you know, a material <laughs> girl, and what have you done for me lately, and all of that yeah. sort of stuff. I listen to the kids, and then <laughs> they tell me that's old stuff now. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of people that go through a phase of their life where they know the dollar price tag of everything, and that's what impresses them. But if you give of yourself, where you take the time to know somebody else, and you try to make something or, or take several things and put them together to where they'll work for a purpose for somebody and they can tell that you paid attention to learning about them, mm -hmm. then that's the gifts they remember. I, I can't tell you how often we'll, we'll get close to Christmas and we'll be either downtown or somewhere doing some last minute work find a family that didn't qualify for all the charities and we'll be running to try to get toys or something at the last minute to, to a family. And we'll be in the stores and we'll see the businessmen come running in there and say, you know, <laughs> I, I need a thoughtful looking gift. I need a gift that looks like I was thoughtful and, and you know, well, what, what is she like? Expensive. So, well, how guilty are you? Oh, about this many dollars, and that's that's. Oh goodness! <laughs> I, every every year I see it. I I do see it. Or somebody driving home from work on Valentine's Day pulls over to the side of the road to buy some flowers, on their way home, you know, because they don't have anything, but they want to appear like they did. They want to appear like they thought of this person or whatever. It's important to live your life according to your values. So at this Christmas season, let's try to remember the people who are important to us. Amen. And let's try to show them that we think about them. And the number one person would be Jesus. Mm -hmm. So how many people out there take the time to center their mind on Jesus? What... Uh, what do you think people will see when they center their mind on Jesus through the Christmas season? Oh, wow. Well, I'm thinking his power and his glory um, seems to be a supercharged time, you know, the, the Christmas season. And um, for me, that's something that, that pops out. I've, I've had a, some not so great Christmases and some really great Christmases. And for me personally, it's been uh, to think about his power and his glory, to think on him his peace and his importance in the world and within myself. So. And, but it's easy to get all wrapped up and tied up in the gifts and Absolutely. the rush and the parties and the hustle and the bustle and the, you know, the clothes and everything else and the appearances and so on. Mm -hmm. But it's easy to forget that Christmas is Jesus Christ Mass. It's the Mass that was said for Jesus Christ. And so we got Christmas. St. Nicholas was a famous bishop who used to take the money that was given to him and give it to other people to use as dowry for their daughters the, for the poor. I won't go into that story too much, but he, that's where we got the idea of presents for children and, and so on. So, of course, the three wise men being, bringing gifts to Christ and what that represented, that has to do with the gifts too. Some of our Hispanic friends celebrate in January the, the three wise men, and they give their children gifts on, on that day. So, hey, praise God, as long as Jesus is glorified, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. We're all for it. Uh, also, that would be a good way to take advantage of the after-Christmas sales on the toys. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always looking for a way to do more with less. <laughs> you bet. You bet. <laughs> awesome. So Christmas is a time to try to remember the difference between how you want to believe that you believe and how you act. Mm -hmm. And it's a perfect opportunity to display both. 
because it's a season that's so full of commercialism. And I went into a Walmart just yesterday, and there was an officer leaning up against the wall, a police officer. And as I was leaving, I went up to him and I said, Merry Christmas. And he came off the wall. I thought, oh, Lord, what did, what did I do, you know? <laughs> and he shook my hand and he said, I have heard happy holidays all day. Wow. He said, thank God for a Merry Christmas. He said, yes, a Merry Christmas. So that's something you all can do out there. You can say Merry Christmas to people. You can act happy, and this is a time of the year when they don't wonder what you want. You know, normally around Christmas I can be nice to people, and they don't think, well, what, does he want to borrow my car or what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Seriously, I had one guy asked me that one time. Wow. I asked him, I said, why aren't you, why aren't you friendly back to people? Mm -hmm. So, well, they might want to borrow my car. <laughs> it's really funny because he didn't even own a car. <laughs> but that was what he was afraid of. Wow. wow. Somebody might want to borrow his car. Okay, so Christmas is a season to remember Jesus. Christmas is a season to remember. I was talking to one of the ministers here at the studio that was on a little bit while ago. And he was talking about how some of the people in his congregation were all upset because, you know, Jesus probably wasn't born on December 25th, and that was the birthday of the son, and blah, 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 blah. And <clears throat> he said uh, that he told them exactly like I tell people, so what? I'll celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ December the 25th, December the 26th, January the 3rd, April the 4th, I, every single day that you'll celebrate it with me, I'll celebrate it. And, and consider, as long as the Lord gets the glory, praise God, every day of the year should be his birthday as he's birthed anew in you. But this is one time of year when, by tradition, you can be nice to people and they don't wonder what you're trying to steal, <laughs> trying to get away with. And, and you can speak nicely to them. What do you think about that? That's awesome. Praise it's, God. Yep, yep. So we can be free in our expression um, of our love back to the Lord. It's a time where, you know, it's universally recognized. So, so what do you think our, our audience, people in New York and here in North Texas and those on the Internet and Roku and on Fios channel, I think it's 27, what... Uh, what do you think we ought to be telling them would be a great way to celebrate this season then? Simply um, think, about, think on the Lord. Think, think about Him and what He's done uh, on the cross. Think about His birth, life, and death. Praise you, Jesus. All right. Well, why don't you go get ready to do the music. I'll let you introduce the song and your, your helper on the guitar and... and um, I'll talk to the camera for a moment, okay? Great, thank you. Okay. I uh, don't know if you all realize it or not, but if you have attended very many services in our church, you realize it. On television, I tone things way down, way down. So we're going to go to the music pretty quickly. We're, we've taken up a little bit more time than I anticipated. And when we come back, I'm going to give you a word like we do in church, a short word um, about Christmas. So, Christian? Today we're going to be singing Silent Night, Holy Night. This is Jeff Nelson on the guitar here.
God. Psalms 31, nope, Psalms 30, verse 5. For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. This is saying, hang in there, hang on with the Lord. And those that endure through the darkness, holding his hand, looking upon him, he will show them his joy, even through the darkness. In his favor is life. So let's stay in that favor. Now Christmas is a time when we need to be more aware of who we are than other times. If there's no difference between you and your neighbors who aren't Christian or aren't serious Christians, then you're doing it wrong and you need to stop and back up and try it again. This is a time to dedicate yourself to the Lord. This is a time to remember who is he and what has he done for you. And if it's not much, you need to talk to us because he's done great things. He's done mighty things. Christian, has he done very much for you? Oh, yes. He's pulled me out of financial ruin and it's taken some time, but he has taken care of me and uh, put me in a position where I can do ministry with the finances that I'm blessed with and just, it blows my mind. That's just one small thing that he's done for me. Can you see how he walked you out of the bad habits that you had mm -hmm. with money mm -hmm. and made you into a person that he could trust with more money? Oh, yeah. See, I, 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 I like to encourage our viewers, this is hard to do, but you need to, to be aware that whatever it is you want God to give you, you first must become a person that can handle that. If you're looking for power, if you're looking for the right person, if you're looking for influence, if you're looking for money, whatever it is you're looking for, well, if you're going directly for it, you're backing up and going the wrong way. You first must ask the Lord to make you into the right person that can handle that properly and not be destroyed by it. Many a good man has been destroyed by too much money, believe it or not. Of course, like a lot of people say, they'd like to try it. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway christian do you have um, any encouragement that you want to tell our viewers uh this christmas season about the nature of god sure the lord jesus loves you very much he loves me he loves those the the believer and the unbeliever he's waiting on the the unbeliever often he's waiting on the believer um, he's waiting for us to be uh, obedient to his call to follow him and do what he asks us to do, uh, trying to follow him, follow and implement our feeble understanding of his, of his wonderful godly principles. And I encourage you to, to try to do that. Um, seek the Lord. He loves you. He's there for you. And uh, that's about all. Well, great. I thought that he would uh, remember that just a, before the show, a few minutes before the show, we were in a nursing home singing Christmas carols to some shut-ins, some people that weren't able to get out. And we were talking about the Spirit of the Lord and how mm. great the Spirit was there. So by doing service to the Lord, he gave us a feeling of his presence, which brings the joy of the Lord. So you want more of the joy of the Lord, seek more of his presence. So what, what other things can people do to seek his presence? Well, there's four big things. Um, <clears throat> prayer and praise, um, reading the scriptures, and gathering together in his name. Okay. 
So why don't you go over those again a little slower and give yeah. uh, just a quick example of each one. Okay. Prayer, um, you could start praying now. Lord, please show me who, who I am, who you are, the difference in the relationship between the two. Have you ever been down so far? I know I have. I've yeah. been so depressed and so down yeah. that all I could muster was a prayer that said, Jesus, help. Jesus, help, yeah, absolutely. And that prayer was heard. You bet. Sincere like, prayers from the heart. Right, right. So there's a pretty good example of how prayer can make a difference. I'm still here. You bet. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so that's the prayer. Um, I, what I was trying to do was trying to nudge, nudge you over into the idea of ask the Lord first. Yeah, ask the Lord first. Because there's people that know, you know, the devil knows more scripture than I ever will. You bet. And he's the devil still. Mm -hmm. So knowing a whole lot of scripture evidently isn't going to be, you know, what gets you into heaven or, or makes you happy. Um, now, knowing a lot of scripture can be part of it. Mm hmm but that's if that's submitted to the Lord. And that's what I was trying to, you know, all four of those things can be done in pride and not get you any closer to the Lord, not bring the joy of the Lord. Absolutely. So that's what I was trying to do. Not very well, but I was trying <laughs> to get you to kind of separate what is gotcha. it like to, um, uh, to study the Bible under the authority of the Lord. Well, you go to him first and you pray for his Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to show you what to read and to illuminate to you what you read. And then when you pray, you pray first, what should I pray for? You know, don't start those prayers to say, let's say you want a pink Cadillac. Here's how you get God to give it to you. <laughs> uh, no, that's not the right way to start praying. Mm -hmm. So read the scriptures, pray, pray, sing praise to the Lord next Saturday, 6 o'clock, right here. I'm going to sing too, so I promise you, you'll sound good. <laughs> I can't promise you that. Oh, <clears throat> so what do we leave out? There's the, oh, and gather together uh -huh. with like-minded people. And one of the times to gather together is on the UA Network at 6 o'clock on Saturday. So right here. Um, just remember, God loves you. We love you. You're welcome here. We see you as part of our family. We pray for you. Please pray for us. And that's the final word. Thank you for watching The Joy of the Lord Show. Tune in next Saturday at 6 to share the joy of the Lord with us again. We have been chosen.